All right, so hopefully I can wrap up the series on this. I think this is video number five of the keel discussion. Uh, so yeah, I think that is one of the first things you need to look at because everybody looks at accommodations first and that is important. The thing is, is you can find a, the whatever accommodation you want. If it's for one, uh, for a couple, uh, like a, a, a young couple could use this as a liveaboard if, if, if they don't value their privacy that much. Um, a small family, this would be a, a weekender for a small family. You got one berth there, you can stuff a kid there. You can stuff two more kids over there and the adults can, you know, you put the wife there and the husband here because this is a little more roomy. If You know, if he's a little fatter or whatever. Yeah, you can get five people in here sleeping uh, very uncomfortably, four very comfortably. Uh, yeah, so two adults, two kids, this is the ideal kind of boat. You know, a lot of room, a lot of space, whatever um but whatever sail plan you want or whatever layout you want there is a, a boat keel setup for that type of boat so you don't always have to go with the the safety of the full keel now a full keel one thing that is really nice about them is again they track really well uh you do have a very protected rudder it's the most heavy built but like i say a heavy built boat that has a lot of drag needs a lot of sail area the more sail area you have in heavy winds, the harder it is to manage, the more dangerous. Now, there is ways around that. Like I say, uh, when I get to the sail plan setup uh, proportions of the videos, could be a little while down. Uh, we'll discuss, you know, uh, a sloop versus a cutter. I would, I wanted to turn this into a cutter. I thought that would have been really cool. That I could, you know, that I wanted a self-tacking jib for like, say, 15 to 25 knots, okay? And then just my my big 150, <laughs> just roll it out whenever it's like 10 knots or lower. Like this, bo this boat in like five knots of wind. Now, mind you, this has an inboard on it too. Uh, if you forget to put the boat in neutral with the, uh, with the inboard, it's like you'll lose a half knot of speed right there. Uh, just putting the boat neutral. But like I say, like in five, uh, ten, five to 10 knot winds, you'd be lucky if you can get three knots. You know what I mean? Like it's really slow. Because the boat's heavy, you know. Uh, this boat, does, it is, um, like I said, most of the boats are under sail for the cruisers. Because they, they go with the idea that most people don't have that much experience. Now, if you got a CNC boat with a tall rig on it, okay, that's a boat with a high aspect ratio. Uh, that boat's more of a performance boat. But people that, you know, even know what that means are probably going to have no problem with a boat like that because they know when to reef the sail. The, the way they design these boats is they put enough sail on them to get them going, but... The problem is, is when there's too much wind, you're overpowered uh, because of the drag. When there's not enough wind, you don't go anywhere. You know, like, I mean, you go somewhere, but like, you're, you're just, it's just dogging along. Yeah, I mean, again, if you're in a rush, you don't care, you don't care. But, you know, it's nice to be able to go uh, sail around for an hour or two and actually cover some distance. And, you know, you don't want to take six hours to couple a couple of nautical miles. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything is compromised. All, every aspect of a sailboat is compromised. But considering um, the pluses and minuses of each keel, so we'll start with the full keel. The pluses would be very simply uh, tracking, durability. Um, sometimes some of the keels, because they're built a part of the hull, the the billage sometimes you get more uh water storage in some of the bigger boats and stuff like that like this has quite the billage uh in fact i can kind of show you how a keel boat would kind of look it would you can see how it's not just flat and then you know flush to the key the, the keel bolts right there so there's a bit of a so again like i say this is a cutaway keel and that's kind of what you sort of see on a more dramatic uh more dramatic boat but uh on the the full length keel boats you'll see that a little bit longer uh and whatever and you could actually use that as sword space or whatever villages usually get pretty nasty so you gotta you know but that is some of the things about the big keel boats uh so they're built like tanks that's good drawbacks less drag slow uh oh one of the other main things is a lot of keel boats do point well like full length keel boats they do point well high in the wind uh but uh full length keel boats some of the drawbacks is when you're going with the wind, they could be a little bit wonky to get them trimmed up just because of the way the balance is on the boat. Uh, but that's kind of any boat, I think. Uh, running with the wind is always the, 
oh, going upwind is always the fun part. Coming downwind is always kind of the, you know, like offwind is great. Upwind is fun. Downwind is always kind of like a bit warm because it feels like the back of the boat <laughs> doing this, you know. So you have to be able to trim your sail, uh, trim your, uh, trim your sails and stuff like that um, to to do that. But even at that, uh, s other things is again uh, more sail area because of the. Um, what am I doing for time? Uh, these videos are going very quick. Uh, you have more sail area because you have you know, again, more drag to overcome, right? So more resistance to overcome. So, so again, having more sail area out for the given, uh, you know, like, so in light winds, you don't move because you got too much drag. And then and when there's too much wind, uh, you, you, you have the sails become hard to manage. So, uh, other thing is, is that, um, uh, if you, you know, like the boat won't respond, like it tracks better, but it won't respond as fast to, you know, changing sea conditions if that becomes an issue. So that's some of the pros and cons with the uh, full length keel. The fin keel, uh, main, main thing is usually you can get them deeper, which means a higher aspect ratio, more efficient, uh, means the boat will move in lighter air with less sail. Uh, it also means the boat will tack faster Meaning, so if you're racing and you want to go around the mark, you can get around, you can pretty, you know, like that's why dinghies are just a, <laughs> like, you got to be careful. You don't throw yourself off. You could turn them so fast. Play spin the boat is pretty fun. Um, uh, the other uh, thing is, is that if you do damage your keel on a fin keel, uh, let's say you just damage the keel. Well, at least you can remove it from the bolts and just drop the keel off and put another one on if you have to. Um... You also get the uh, added advantage of, uh, like I say, just the, you have a, f you can run just as flat, you know, like on, on, on the, uh, you know, you can have usually a flatter bottom on your boat. So again, less resistance, you go faster and you can sit flatter, uh, and tack faster. Drawbacks of the fin keel, not, you know, like again, if you run aground, you can, you know, bust things up pretty bad and you can actually sink your boat. Other things is some keels might be twitchy. And then, of course, if you're running a deeper draft, uh, one of the for the given size of boat, one of the things is you you know you you have less areas you can go. So that's one of the things with the fin keel. I still say the fin keel is the best performance wise, all around. And again, there's a gazillion types of uh, fin keels out there. Then the cutaway keel. Uh, uh, the other thing with the fin keel is usually you don't have a protected rudder, skeg rudder, like this boat. Uh, once you have a protected skeg rudder, you can almost arguably call it a cutaway keel, uh, you know, arguably. Uh, so the, the, the middle ground is this kind of boat where you got the cutaway keel, where you get good tracking, maybe not as good as the full length keel, uh, good tacking, maybe not as good as a fin keel, kind of best of both worlds. You, your rudder's protected. So if the boat runs aground, the, the keel is still built pretty heavy even though it's uh, you got keel bolts uh but you're yet you're still kind of shallow draft because your keel's a little bit longer than a regular fin keel so your your keel's still more longer than it is deep um you got a little bit more drag but you you got shallower draft and you don't have resistance the whole length to the back of the boat so that that gives you the best i think of both worlds uh and then of course your rudder's protected uh you know variable degrees depending on you know what setup you got so i find that the cutaway keel is the best all around for a, a cruiser a cruiser racer a racer cruiser i want a fin keel and a freestanding rudder so to speak underslung or whatever uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that's just my take on the issue. I, I don't think a lot of people consider that when they're buying a boat, but a lot of that's out of the not knowing, you know, like you, you don't know, you, you just, you're just getting into it. Oh, what am I doing for time? Uh, and it's okay. That's not too bad. So hopefully that wraps up the series. Uh, again, I'm not a nautical engineer, but it's just what I've, you know, going from a Tanzer 22, which was a pretty cool little keel boat, three and a half foot draft or whatever, three foot nine, whatever it was. Um, it was a weird shape. It, this boat went up wind really well, came down wind kind of funky, but it, it was with such a big cop. It was a fun boat to sail. It was like a big dinghy and you had four foot underneath and whatever, and a big flat. It was a big party boat. A little part, a little big, it was a big little boat. It was, a, it was probably the biggest of the little 22 footers out there. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, sometimes, you know, the heavy uh, pounding of the, the waves and stuff like that with the rudder, rudder and tiller hanging off the back of the boat, sometimes that would, uh, you know, hardware would get loose. So I knew that my next boat had to be built a little bit heavier and I wanted the rudder a little bit more protected. And uh, hence, this was the boat. So the next part, I guess, will be in here, like the, in the cabin, like uh, stuff like that. I'll make a series on that. But i got a couple other series I want to do. So hopefully that gives you an idea. But just do a lot of research on different keels because um, if you buy a boat, especially a big boat and an old boat, and it has a full keel and everything like that, it seems great. But then, you know, you're going to see what I mean in, in the light area. You're not going to like it that much because it's just like... You're going to be under power all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to get, got to get point A to point B. So you might want to give up some of the illusion of safety versus uh, uh, not safe. Like a, a, like a lot of people, oh, fin keels are not safe. Volvo ocean racers go around the, around the world with swinging keels like this that are 15 feet long with a big heavy bulb on the end of it. And they don't, but they have the skills to keep themselves out of trouble. So. I'll leave it out about that. So anyway, if you like the content, all the links down below to help uh, support the channel. Thanks for that. Happy sailing.